God is saying, Amazing opportunities are flowing into your life with ease. You upgraded your self-image. Your confidence is growing. Your energy is seen and felt by people who value you. Every positive decision you make in the direction of your dreams is rewarded in ways that you may not initially perceive. Trust in the divine taming of everything and keep moving forward when one door closes. Doors close and open precisely when they are meant to. No matter what this journey puts you through, stay rooted in love. Stay rooted in truth. Stay rooted in faith. Don't let anything take away the life in you, because even in darkness, the light will still find its way back. Surround yourself with those who uplift and inspire you. They will fuel your positivity. Take what misaligns as a sign. Look at what flows as a message. Everything that happens in your life and everything that doesn't isn't coincidental. Open your arms to what comes and don't force what resists. Learn and grow through the different waves that come and go. You're finally beginning to provide for yourself, but in a different way. Providing balance, restoring stability and longevity to your necessities, and positioning yourself to reach for the luxuries. Not just material, though. Inner luxuries. Peace of mind, confidence, self-value, self-worth. You're feeding yourself an entirely new diet, one that is based on your growth and the trajectory of your desired manifestations. May you leave everyone you encounter feeling seen, heard, and understood. May your words and actions radiate love and kindness. May you always remember that you have the power to change this world for the better by your way of being. Let go of toxic relationships that drain your energy and hinder your growth. Embrace the freedom that comes with releasing negativity and focus on cultivating meaningful connections with people who bring out the best in you. You deserve to be surrounded by love, support, and positivity. Trust your instincts and choose to surround yourself with those who truly appreciate and value you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for choosing me to serve the kingdom. Allow me to be in your presence all the time. Bless me with a pure heart and mind. Allow me to be able to hear your voice loud and clear through my journey on earth. Keep me from harm's way. Order my steps. Create a clear path for me to walk through. And forgive me for all my sins. Show me your mercy and kindness. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Heavenly Father, as I start this day off that you have blessed me with, I thank you for my life and the days you add on to it. I call upon your name to ask that you rest your power on those who need you, Lord, those that are suffering and seek a way out of it. Grant us peace in the midst of our chaos. Provide for us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Conceal us underneath your wings from all evil. Bless us with wisdom and discernment. Let us cast our burdens onto you because you care for us. Forgive us for our sins knowingly and unknowingly. Teach us how to honor your name and prepare us for any challenges we might face today. Dear God, although I am trying my best to do right by you, sometimes I feel that I fail you. I feel like the devil has been working overtime to try to sabotage my future and the beautiful plans that you have for me. Please strengthen my spirit. Your word says that no weapon formed against me shall prosper but that doesn't mean that there won't be any weapons. Let me be so confident in you that even when I feel like the devil is on my back, I know that you got me regardless. Do not let me be deceived or manipulated by him. Show me how to resist temptation and stay connected to you through faith and prayer. Dear God, I don't want to react to pain and anger anymore. You have renewed me, 
so I must let go of my old ways, including my anger. You have allowed me to blossom beautifully into a new and improved version of myself. I release pain and anger out of my life and allow joy and peace in. I ask that you remind me to think before reacting, and when I do react, see that it is gracefully. Teach me how to handle myself and others with patience and respect, not anger or rage. Please substitute my anger out with self-control and wisdom. I decide to overcome the spirit of anger and X out anything in my life that can lead me to sin, self-destruction, and misery. Dear God, I come to you today in prayer to humbly ask for your protection. Protect me and my loved ones from all evil. May trouble never follow our footsteps. I decree and declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Protect us from our enemies known and unknown. Please keep us safe physically and emotionally. Allow us to take refuge in you at all times. I bind up any spiritual attacks against me and my loved ones. Cover my home, my life, and everything attached to me with the blood of Jesus. Dear God, I have been restored and renewed by your glory. All I am is to thank you. You have set me free from worldly traps. I thank you for forgiving me for my sins and helping me strive to be better than the person I was yesterday. I thank you for not giving up on me. Prosperous life over I decree and declare a peaceful and protect me and my loved ones in the name of Jesus. I claim freedom for my bloodline. Let your presence rise over our lives. Everything that the enemy thought he could take from me, you have given me back tenfold. You have never left or forsaken me. Continue to rest your power on me. Bless me with wisdom and supernatural capacity to grasp your word and share it with others. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Release your toxic attachment to someone or something that's draining your energy. Be more present with each moment in your life, and you'll realize that the more present you are, the more you enjoy your own company. Make sure you're loving yourself and taking care of yourself. Let go of what others feel or think about you and focus on your relationship with yourself. Self-approval is the foundation of self-love and an antidote to shame, unworthiness, or sadness. Have hope and become more playful to enjoy your life. Dear God, as the sun rises and I start my day, I want to thank you. I come before you full of gratitude and love, thanking you for my life. I ask that you allow me to walk confidently and in faith today, knowing that you walk with me. Grant me the strength and courage that I need to face any challenges and obstacles that I might come across today. Bless me with the wisdom I need to discern your will. May everything I do align perfectly for me and my journey today. Please keep me and my loved ones protected and safe from all evil. Thank you, Lord. Dear God, no one can tell me that there isn't power in prayer. I have seen it firsthand. You have been so giving and generous to me and my loved ones. You hear out our cries and come to our rescue daily. You deliver us from our troubles and comfort us. I ask that you continue to guide me and remind me of the power of prayer. I thank you for answering my prayers in your divine timing when you know I'm ready. Not when I think I am. Please continue to have it your way with me and show me that all I need is faith in you. Dear God, the goals that I want to reach require a lot of change in my life and I am willing to do just that, but I can't do it without you. Today, I call upon your name to grant me your divine revelation. You know exactly what I need. Reveal to me those who I should love, but from a distance. Reveal to me the things that I am doing in my life that are setting me back. 
Reveal to me the steps I need to take to improve and push me closer to my purpose. I humbly ask that when you do reveal these things to me, please show me how to understand them and accept them. Help me apply myself to make a change in my life. Thank you, Lord. Dear God, please be my financial advisor. Manage how I spend the money you have blessed me with. Show me how to invest my money into things that will benefit me and others. Do not allow me to get caught up into the hype of looking fly or trying to impress the world with materialistic things. You are the only one I want to impress. In the end, none of the materialistic things I can buy will matter. Grant me financial wisdom. Allow me to create and execute long-term goals that will help not only me, but nations financially. Above all, never let me grow love for money. Ensure that I always remain humble and give freely to others. Thank you in advance. Thank you for believing in me even when nobody did. Thank you for never leaving my side even when people snaked at me. Thank you for never judging me even when I do worldly things. I am so grateful for everything that you do for me. You are truly my best friend. If it wasn't for you, I would have been so lost. I'm so proud of our bond. We stay lit. Keep whispering secrets into my ear. Keep loving me unconditionally. Keep feeding me wisdom. You are Himothy. Our love runs deep. Lord, I am so very thankful for the gift of this breakfast. Thank you for the resources to make this meal. Not everyone has that privilege, and it does not go unnoticed. This meal is delicious, and it makes me more in awe of you. You designed our bodies to experience so much goodness. Lord, I am so grateful for all that you do in my life. Thank you for the opportunity to live each day to glorify you. No matter what gets thrown my way today, Lord, please just help me to remember to be thankful and grateful for the little things such as this breakfast. In your name, I pray. Amen. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. You are my child. You do as I did. While on earth... I grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. You are to do likewise. Desire wisdom, and I will give it to you. And the more wisdom you have, the more I will give. Grow in stature. Grow and mature in me, my ways, and my word. Do not be content to remain as you are, but press in to me and all I have for you. I pour my favor over you. I especially want to bless you in all your relationships. I know relationships, and I am especially focused on those in your family, then circling out from there. When you say, but you don't know my situation, well, I do. I know it intimately, from all angles. I will give you wisdom and direction for every circumstance. I pour my favor on you and your relationship. Dear God, I pray to you this very moment because I am struggling greatly. Upon my mind is great fear and anxiety as I worry about the future ahead of me. Lord, I pray to you for guidance in putting my trust in you. Once I put my trust in you completely, I will not fear because I know everything will be in your almighty hands. I pray that I can learn to trust in you and your plan for me. I know that you are all knowledgeable and that no matter what happens, you will be with me every step of the way. I pray that I find peace in your guidance and your presence and an ease of mind as I focus on the plan that you have already created for me instead of my own, because your plan is always greater. I pray that no matter what I will endure in my future, that I will always turn to you for both guidance and thanks. God, thank you for directing the way for me. The Bible is so clear on how important it is to never look back. 
not at an old position, an old ex, an old friendship, or even old ways that God has brought you out of. There are many people in the Bible, but in clear words, God tells us to remember Lot's wife, who turned into a pillar of salt, stuck in time. I pray that when you're tempted to go back, the Spirit of God reminds you that you have too much to look forward to. When everything is shaking, God is up to something. It's so easy to forget that God can use even the most hurtful, hopeless situation to show His love and faithfulness to us. So today, be reminded that in your pain, God is doing something. You might not understand it now, but continue to trust in Him, to obey His will, and to worship Him. God wouldn't allow anything unless it has a purpose. Jihad did not deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt so that they could enjoy the promised land. He freed them from their bondage so they could come to know and worship Him. Three months after they left Egypt, God reminded His Piopel why He had delivered them on eagles' wings. It was to bring the people to Himself. That is, God saved them so that they could enjoy intimate fellowship with Him. The Israelites had been slaves with no freedom to worship God. Now, with their own land, they could come to know and serve God freely. God's call was not to destroy the idolatrous nations in Canaan, not to settle the lands they conquered, and not to establish a new nation, although all of these would be accomplished. Rather, God called them primarily to be a people who lived and worshipped Him. Through God's act of deliverance, they came to know Him as an almighty and compassionate God, and they were now free to respond to Him. We are so activity-oriented that we assume we were saved for a task we are to perform rather than for a relationship to enjoy. God uses our activities and circumstances to bring us to Himself. When He gives us a God-sized assignment, its sheer impossibility brings us back to Him for His enabling. When God allows us to go through crises, it brings us closer to Him. If we are not careful, we can inadvertently bypass the relationship in order to get on with the activity. When you are by your activity for God, remember that God leads you to thee in order to bring you to himself. Lord Jesus, I come before you, just as I jam. I am sorry for my sins. I repent my sins. Please forgive me. In your name, I forgive all others for what they have done against me. I renounce Satan, the evil spirits, and all their works. I give you my entire self, Lord Jesus, now and forever. I invite you into my life, Lord Jesus. I accept you as my Lord, God, and Savior. Heal me, change me, strengthen me in body, soul, and spirit. Come, Lord Jesus, cover me with your precious blood and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I love you, Lord Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I shall follow you every day of my life. Amen. Mary, my mother, Queen of Peace, all the angels and saints, please help me. Amen. Say this prayer faithfully, no matter how you feel, when you come to the point where you sincerely mean each word, with all your heart, something good spiritually will happen to you. You will experience Jesus, and He will change your whole life in a very special way. Thank you for the blessings and mercies you have bestowed upon me. Thank you for your protection and guidance. As we begin a new month, I pray that you, Lord, will assist me in focusing my thoughts on you and remaining in you. Guide me in letting go of any distractions that may be interfering with my connection with you. Teach me to love you and guide me in focusing my attention on you. Cleanse me of my sins and assist me in letting go of anything that does not reflect well on your holy name. 
Help me in living a Christ-centered life. Allow your Holy Spirit to lead me in whatever I do. Let it serve as a constant reminder to always put you first no matter what. Help me to study your word more thoroughly and to gain the wisdom and understanding necessary to apply it in my life. When things don't go as planned, please remind me that your plan for me is better than what I believe I desire. We pray, Lord Jesus, for our president. We are deeply concerned that he may know the will of God and that he may have the spiritual courage and grace to follow it. Deliver him, we pray, from all selfish considerations. Lift him above the claims of politics. Fill him with the Spirit of God that shall make him fearless to seek, to know, to do the right. Save him from friends who, in the name of politics or even friendship, would persuade him from that holy path. Strengthen and empower his advisors. Bring them, too, to their knees in prayer. May their example and their influence spread, that we, in these United States, may yet have a government of men and women who know you, the Almighty God, as their friend, and who place your will first in their lives as well as in their prayers. Hear and answer. We pray, forgiving us all our unworthiness, cleansing us from every ignoble thought and unworthy ambition that we may be renewed in spirit and mind and heart through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. But because the blind man can recognize neither what is beautiful nor what is ugly, he calls upon the Lord, Have mercy upon me. Because human beings, according to their nature, cannot correctly recognize their sins. You should turn to the Father of light, from whom all good and perfect gifts come from above, and to the Son, who is that light, who enlightens all humans, and pray, Lord God, Holy Spirit. You are the true and constant support in every need, a spirit of truth and promise, God's finger, the water of life, a heavenly fire, which warms cold hearts and ignites them with true love for God. You have revealed yourself to the apostles with wonderful gifts in a powerful wind and fiery tongues. We ask you now, therefore, to come into our hearts to strengthen and gladden our ignorant consciences. Sanctify us with your blessing and be unto us the holy assurance of our redemption and our salvation. Amen. Dear God, even though I can feel the spiritual battle going on, I know you are by my side and with me always. So I pray in Jesus' name that you would crush the devil underneath your feet and I command all darkness to run and hide in response to your presence. You are here, right now, Holy Spirit. Thank you for being near me. I declare your name as holy and beautiful Jesus, because that is who you are. I ask in your powerful and loving name that you fill me with your peace and comfort so that I can rest and sleep, and when the morning comes, I will rejoice in you because you deserve the glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Our prayer for those who do us ill both breaks the power of reveng and releases the power of love to do good in the face of evil. How can we possibly love those who cause us harm or ill will? With God, all things are possible. He gives power and grace to those who believe in and accept the gift of the Holy Spirit. His love conquers all, even our hurts, fears, prejudices, and griefs. Only the cross of Jesus Christ can free us from the tyranny of malice, hatred, revenge, and resentment, and gives us the courage to return evil with good. Such love and grace has power to heal and to save from destruction. That is why Paul the Apostle tells those who know the love and mercy of Jesus Christ to bless and not curse, nor take revenge, and to overcome evil with good. Romans 12, 14, 17, 21. 
Do you know the power of God's love, mercy, and righteousness, moral goodness, for overcoming evil with good? Lord Jesus, your love brings freedom and pardon. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and set my heart free with your merciful love that nothing may make me lose my temper, ruffle my peace, take away my joy, nor make me bitter towards anyone. Jesus, I plead your precious blood over my body, mind, soul, and spirit. My past healings, my conscious and my subconscious, my family, friends, and possessions, my intellect and my will, my feelings, thoughts, and emotions, my words and actions, my vocation, marriage, relationships. Protect with your precious blood my work, finances, ministries, all other activities, all that I am and all that I do. Lord, I dedicate all of these things to you, and I acknowledge you as Lord and Master of all. In your name, Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you to bind, silence, and separate Satan and all his evil spirits that are coming against me, any of my loved ones or any of my possessions. Lord Jesus, I ask you to command Satan and all of his companion spirits to depart from me and go directly to the foot of your cross, never to return to us again. Father, I ask that our bodies, minds, souls, and spirits be washed clean and healed by the Holy Spirit, and I ask the Holy Spirit to dwell in us forever. I ask you, Blessed Mother, through the grace of your Immaculate Conception, to intercede for our protection. I ask you, Eternal Father, to release St. Michael the Archangel and all the angels to surround us, protect us, and mind to us. God forgive me where I have been resentful, selfish, dishonest, or afraid today. Help me to not keep anything to myself, but to discuss it all openly with another person. Show me where I owe an apology and help me make it. Help me to be kind and loving to all people. Use me in the mainstream of life, God. Remove worry, remorse, or morbid, sick reflections, that I may be of usefulness to others. Amen. God directs my thinking today so that it will be divorced of self-pity, dishonesty, self-will, self-seeking and fear. God inspires my thinking, decisions and intuitions. Help me to relax and take it easy. Free me from doubt and indecision. Guide me through this day and show me my next step. God give me what I need to take care of any problems. I ask all these things that I may be of maximum service to you and my fellow man in the name of the steps I pray. Amen. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Father, I thank you for empowering me with your arm or so that I may stand against the schemas of the enemy. He is real, and he is not happy that my joy is complete in you. He is not after my stuff, he's after my joy, and I'm serving notice on him that he cannot have it. I proclaim that the joy of the Lord is my strength, and the enemy cannot take it away. Thank you for restoring me and empowering me with your word that sustains me. I'm thankful for the times I rest in you and allow you to shower me with your love in the morning and throughout my day. Help me not to lose focus or listen to the lies of the enemy who seek to cause worry and distress. I will not succumb to his schemes. You will open my eyes to the truth, and I will hear your voice and heed the warning. Lord, so many times I've allowed the world to overwhelm me, and the noise overtakes me. 
Forgive me for not proclaiming truth over my life and allowing the enemy a stronghold over me. Remind me when I become lazy or overworked and allow him a foothold. Teach me to settle my mind and take time to rest and allow you to fill me with your peace and love. I bring you my burdens today which lay heavy on my heart. I entrust them to you, Lord, and I rest in your goodness and mercy to care and tend to those I love and that which you've entrusted to me. I glorify your name. I praise you for your everlasting love and kindness. Allow me opportunities today to show this world what loving Jesus looks like by living a life of complete surrender to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we ask for comfort for everyone who is distressed or heartsick over bad news. Please comfort families that are watching a loved one struggle and all who are dealing with health issues, crises, and tragedies. We ask for your comfort for caregivers and all who are weary, overwhelmed, or just need rest. May everyone who is feeling alone or abandoned and all who are separated from loved ones sense your nearness and comfort. Please comfort everyone who is fighting for their marriage and those who are dealing with the aftermath of divorce. Please pour out your comfort and grace on persecuted Christians and those who have nowhere to turn for help. Please comfort, heal, and help all who are dealing with depression and mental health issues. The Bible says you are the God of all comfort. You comfort us in ways no one else can. We are asking you to put your arms around those who are in dark or painful places today. May your love warm and sustain each of us. May we feel your strength well up in us. May we feel your courage and power fortify us. May we breathe in your peace and exhale every negative emotion and all the tension that is inside of us. May your hope rise within us and your grace and mercy rain down on us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that is with us and working through us to help us stand through all we face. May we, in turn, comfort others with the same comfort you give us. Thank you for your heart of compassion towards us and for your love that you lavish on us. Thank you for hearing our prayers, and we thank you that we can come boldly to your throne of grace and ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. We look forward to all you will do as we look to you. Amen. Thank you, God, for the harvest. I am thankful for what I have and for what I will receive. In this spirit of thankfulness, I pray with a very grateful heart. Your loving presence provides for my every need. You make the rough ways smooth. Thank you for your vigilant care. Thank you for strengthening my judgment. Good judgment that turns me away from pursuing courses that may be unwise and unfulfilling. Good judgment that prompts right responses and right action. Thank you for your empowerment and strength in me as wisdom. Wisdom to know what to do in any need. Wisdom to know how to handle any situation. Wisdom to avoid danger. Wisdom to choose right paths. Dear God, I am grateful for life, as it is unfolding in my life and in my experiences. I am grateful for the courage, strength, vision, and stability of mind. I have to know that all things are working together for the highest good of all, even in the midst of change. I am aware that every good thing comes from you, God. I pray that I will be aware of all the good and give thanks for everything I see. I do not take anything for granted. I am filled with gratitude. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. In the name of Jesus, I decree from this moment forward. I see myself the way God sees me. I am highly favored by the Lord. I am crowned with glory and honor. I am the righteousness of God in Christ and reigning as a king in life through the one man Jesus Christ the Messiah. 
In Jesus' name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment, supernatural increase, restoration, increased assets, great victories, recognition, prominence, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, and battles won. I do not have to fight, all because of the blessing and favor of God in my life. In Jesus' name, every morning when I arise, I expect divine favor to go before me and surround me as with a shield with goodwill and pleasures forevermore. Doors are now open for me that men say are impossible to open. No obstacle can stop me and no hindrances can delay me. In Jesus' name, I am honored by my Father as I receive genuine favor that comes directly from Him. I am special to Him. I am the object of His affection. I am blessed and highly favored by the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, when something is truly pure, it's without blemish. It isn't tainted in any way, shape, or form. It isn't polluted by outside contaminants. It isn't corrupted by sin. In the same way, we want our lives to be pure. We don't want to worship you with one hand and serve sin with the other. We don't want our lives tossed back and forth with every false wind of doctrine. We want to be grounded in truth and truly abandoned to you. We also want this for our marriage, Lord. Help us to safeguard it, to keep our thoughts pure, and to stand true to the commitment we made. Protect us from anything that tries to come between us. Give us the strength to keep our eyes on each other. Grant us the wisdom to see the danger of lust and sin before we find ourselves stepping away, and grant us the strength to turn our back on it quickly. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth vo a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Dear Heavenly Father, we can trust one another more than anyone else when it comes to keeping a secret. We rely on each other with the most intimate parts of our heart. We can depend on each other to be there when we've had a rough day. Yet somehow doubt finds a way in. Lord, we ask for your help to both trust and to be trustworthy companions. You created us to trust and be trusted, but our sin has said otherwise. We haven't been perfect. We've failed in the past, but we desire to grow in your wisdom and grace. Give us faith that we'll hold true to our vows and give us the strength to fulfill them. Help us to trust in the love that we have for each other and help us to show love the way that we should. Remind us that regardless of how difficult life might be, we'll remain strong together. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hop all things, endureth all things. Dear Heavenly Father, give us a passion to fight hard for our marriage. Even on the days when we're not feeling the love, may we always remember that love is so much more than a feeling. It's a commitment to cherish each other, whatever may come. Every day is a new opportunity to fall deeply in love yet again, as we're constantly changing and learning to love in new ways. Help us to work through our differences and to find common ground that draws us together. Soften our hearts as we grow, so that we might bend when we need to and give when we should. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, 
and where thou lodgest I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, aught but death part thee and me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you today for a better life. I thank you, Lord, for giving me the strength to discipline my flesh, for teaching me how to change my own life by changing my own behavior. Thank you, Father. I praise you for the desire to be better, to live better, to treat my family and friends better, to treat myself better, and to better my relation, ship with you. I see now that you really are everything I need. I boldly declare, I will not go back to who or what I was. I will not go back. I call my mind, my will, and my emotions, subject to the Holy Spirit, and I submit my plans to your will. Father God, I am burdened by negative thoughts that fill me with self-doubt. You see the turmoil within my mind, even the thoughts I struggle to express, and I lay them all before you. Lord, I am weary of these thoughts that try to steal my peace and joy. I ask for your divine intervention, that you may grant me the strength and wisdom to overcome these destructive patterns. Your word in Philippians 4.8 reminds me to focus on whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. Help me hold fast to this truth and turn my mind towards thoughts that honor you and dispel self-doubt. In moments of darkness, be my guiding light, leading me toward thoughts of hope, love, and positivity. In your presence, I find solace and peace, and I long for your transformative power to renew my mind. With your everlasting patience and compassion, I trust that I can rise above these negative thoughts and embrace a life filled with love. In your life, you will be hurt by others, sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally. How you handle that hurt determines your happiness. When you bottle up hurt and hold on to it, that is called resentment. If somebody hurt you years ago and you're still holding on to it, it will poison your life. For your own health and happiness, you must learn to forgive. The Bible says forgive and be forgiven. They're interrelated. Forgiveness is the only way to get rid of the past. That's one of the values of prayer. It helps you unload. Forgive those who have hurt you and let it go so you can get on with life. When we let go of our hurts and forgive others, we are reflecting the grace of our Heavenly Father, who forgave us and continues to forgive us. It means we've given God our love, we've given God our lives, and in doing that, we worship God. Are you always in a hurry? Is your to-do list unrealistically long? Has more than one person ever told you to slow down? Do you feel guilty when you relax? Do you have to get sick to take time off? The pace of modern society pushes us to keep going and going and going. Many people work even on their day off, and those who go to a church service often head home afterward only to dive right into work, whether it's housework, schoolwork, or career work, trying to do all the stuff they didn't accomplish during the regular work week. No wonder we're exhausted. Most of us are maxed out. But that's not the way of the Good Shepherd. Psalm 23, 2 says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. God makes you lie down in green pastures. That's rest. And He leads me beside quiet waters. That's refreshment. God in His goodness created rest, and He considers it as important as work. A loving shepherd makes sure his sheep get enough rest to stay healthy. It's the same with God, your good shepherd. If you won't lie down, God will make you lie down. Sometimes the only way God can get you to look up is to lay you flat on your back. He will do that because He cares about your physical, emotional, and spiritual health. 
Isn't it amazing how much better things look after a good night's sleep? The difference between being stressed and being blessed is often rest. A lot of your worry, hurry, scurry, and restlessness comes from not understanding the goodness of God in your life. When you understand what God has done for you and wants to do for you in the future, you can relax, let go, and learn to rest. You can live in goodness. Many people ask, how do I get rid of negative thoughts, but this is impossible as our ego will always exist. The goal is to learn how to observe these negative thoughts instead of taking them as part of our identity. All thoughts aren't actually who we truly are. They come from past conditions and experiences and what we are taught to think about ourselves. So you must ask yourself, what do I actually believe? What thoughts are mine and what are from the ego? When a negative thought arises, don't feed energy into it. Simply let it pass with the understanding. This isn't what you truly believe about yourself and isn't true either. Ask your higher self to show you how she views you. This is who you are, your natural state. You can slowly learn to replace negative thoughts with what you want to believe. Egg, a thought may come up. I look terrible today. Simply say no to this thought. Then repeat the desired thought. I look and feel amazing, and that's all that matters. It takes time to rebuild thought patterns, but with continuous practice and observing your thoughts, you will be able to see how the mind is completely irrational. Exercise. Look in the mirror every morning and tell yourself three things you would like to hear from others, even if you don't believe it. Yet the thought patterns will get stronger each time. Get this validation from within. If you want to think you are beautiful, all you have to do is tell yourself you are any negative thoughts. Simply pay no them. If you don't want to believe it anymore, simply ignore it. Show mind with positivity. Yes, it's real. And the prophet S.A.W. said it's worse than black magic. As it could kill a person. Don't share pictures of your success food, selfies, where you are, or anything else, as many people can't digest it and become jealous. Live a private life and do you. Nobody needs to know your business, especially those who aren't happy for you. Their jealousy or hatred could lead you to depression or even losing all that you have. Be humble and keep it to yourself. Live your life for you, not for the attention that could end it. Own the fact that you are different. Own that you are a deep feeler and thinker. Own that you are tuned into a different frequency. Own that fact that you sense things that others don't. Own the fact that you want to talk about angels, energy, miracles, and spirituality. Own that you're done having meaningless conversations. Own that you're done holding yourself back. Own that you crave freedom to feel the now. It's okay if your family doesn't get you. It's okay if your friends don't join you. It's okay if the world judges you. It's okay if you want to dance barefoot upon the earth and endlessly gaze at the stars. It's okay that you cry over sunsets and chase moonbeams. It's wonderful, in fact. It's beautiful. You have come a long way to be who you are. The world needs you to be exactly as you are. So own it. Own all of it. Love all of you. The world needs you to be exactly as you are. You hold the balance in this crazy world. The occult is about Christ and about his spirit as the bride, and the occult just can't handle it. And Hollywood just looks like a giant imbecile. And the Freemasons have 33 degrees of dumb. Where is your Ipsissimus? Where is your craft manifesting anything other than oppressive power control that is base nature and proof of failure to advance in evolution, the alchemy of the soul? Don't ever ask me to be a part of your house. Just the fact alone that you divide gender into hierarchy is enough to prove you're fraudulent and have no mastery in the science. 
I will not be in a house not chosen for the depths of crossing and is impotent to produce magic greater than what has been seen in times past. You have snakes, but you do not have one that devours, and neither do you have one that flies. If I wanted to play church, I certainly wouldn't choose yours. That's become just another illusion, though you refute that. Nevertheless, your non-religious establishment has become as law unto yourselves. I will not step down from equality in God simply to pacify weak men who walk in ego and need to be a different lesser God over women in their ignorance of the true understanding of the archetypes. There is nothing wrong with having a plan. As a matter of fact, I think it is wise to do so, but we should be ready at any time to drop our plans and follow God. He often gives us opportunities to help someone or to follow him in an adventure that will bring blessings into our lives, but we can easily miss out on his better plan if we are not willing to let go and let God lead. There are also times when what seems like an interruption is God's protection from some unseen danger we would encounter if we continued in the path we had planned. Can heavy traffic that disrupts our plans save us from being in an accident? Could the airport delay be a blessing in disguise? The answer to these examples is yes, and if we will trust God with things like this and believe that our times are in His hands, see Psalm 31, 15, we will enjoy more peace and have less stress. Prayer of the Day Father, help me follow your lead at all times. I want your will to be done in my life, and I want to always be available for you any time you need to use me to further your will. Help me to never miss a divine opportunity with you. Please subscribe our YouTube channel to reach 40,000 divine subscribers before May. Please share this video to your loved ones and share super thanks type amen to affirm thanks for watching.